Hey, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today I'm working on importing profiles from FL Slicer or FL Sun Slicer over into Orca Slicer. Now, these instructions should work if you're trying to move any settings from one slicer implementation over to Orca Slicer. So let's go ahead and get started. I've opened up Orca Slicer on my machine, and I just want to take a quick look here. If I hit help and then go to Setup Wizard, when I move through the settings and I type in FL Sun, I'll see that they don't list the T1 Pro, which FL Sun sent me to test, listed as a possible profile. Now, if I go over to FL Sun Slicer, they, of course, have a profile already built in for the T1 Pro. Now, I've tried various different ways. I've tried sort of hacking at it to see if I could move slicers over or move profiles over. I can see the configs on both printers, but if I copy all the configs over onto Orca Slicer, next time I open up Orca Slicer, it cancels out and basically deletes them. So I can't figure out how to move things. So the way I'm going to solve this problem is I'm just going to move settings from one slicer over to the other. Now, I probably won't cover everything because it's not that exciting, but I'll try to cover just basically the things I'm interested in. So how I'm going to start is I have the default profile open FL Sun Slicer. I'm just going to move that to the side of my screen. And then I'm going to start with the profile for the T1 over here in Orca Slicer. And I'm just starting to look at this. And let's open up the settings for the T1. And then let's open up the settings for the T1 Pro. I'm going to keep those side by side. And let's just look at the settings here and the settings here. So we're going to up this slightly. So I'm just copying the setting here, moving it over and copying it here and i'll hit okay and okay here now let's look down through the rest of these settings and i just want to make sure everything is the same and i need to change this over to brass let's go to the machine g code i need to scroll up here i'm going to simplify my life and just copy all the code from the fl sun slicer so i'm going to hit Control a copy, go over to Orca Slicer, control A, and then control B to copy the code in. Now, same with the end code. I'm going to start in FL Slicer, control A, and then control C over in Orca Slicer, control A, and control B. So that pastes, pastes it in. I'm just going to scroll down. I'm willing to bet the layer change code is the same in both. And of course, it's not. Well, that's interesting. So let's just copy the code from the before layer change in FL Sun and paste it over here in Orca Slicer. Continue to scroll down, see if there's any other code here I need to grab. It doesn't look like it. Now, I, I am seeing that instead of pause, oh, let's see. So the pause command in FL Slicer or FL Sun Slicer, I'm going to keep saying that wrong. They're using M600, so let's just change that. I think that'd be all right. Let's go to motion ability. This is probably where I'm going to see some differences. And I'm already seeing these are in a different order. So let's, so we want to emit G code limits. That's selected here. And let's change this to 3000. So I'm going to basically go through all of these settings and change them all. So why don't I finish this off camera? So I'm just copying the speed settings and speed limitations from FL Sun Slicer over to the settings in Orca Slicer. So let me pause and I'll be right back. 
I've moved all my settings, but the one thing I'm noticing is the maximum acceleration for travel. I can't seem to update that. So what I'm going to do is sort of look through my settings. I'll leave that as is. And I mean, I need to say that I'm noticing the T1 versus T1 Pro. There really is a huge speed difference. So for my next step, I'm just going to hit the extruder and let's make some changes over there. Right now, I'm just looking through the settings and just going to transfer them over. Now, I may wind up changing these eventually just because of uh, if I test things where I, I like things a little bit different. Now, this, of course, they, they don't actually match perfectly, so that's a little bit annoying, but I'm just going to have to do the best I can here. And this is one of the reasons why I don't like the default slicer in that comes with most of the manufacturers because what winds up happening is I'm stuck with usually something that's behind where everybody else is at and Orca slicer I like how fast they iterate which makes me happy that's on all surfaces Z hop type is normal and let's hit save now I'm just going to go over to notes just to see if there's anything else it doesn't look like it so let's close the printer settings now so I have all the printer settings. Next, I'm going to transfer and take a look at how they have their filament set up. Now I have a generic profile I have here, and I'm gonna use that as a basis, my work. And of course I accidentally closed this. So for my next step, I'm just gonna move filament settings over. Now I have a generic profile I created for myself for PLA plus, I think it's gonna work fine in this case. So I'm just going to open up the filament settings in FL Sun Slicer. Then I'm going to open them up in Worka Slicer, have them side by side, and then just compare those two for both printers. Now what's interesting, let's start at the top here, the flow ratio is actually really high, or really low, I mean. So let's go down here. The flow ratio in FL Sun Slicer is 0.93. So I'm just going to use that. I'm going to enable pressure advance and they're using 0 0.02, which I have. I'm going to enable while I'm here, adaptive pressure advance. But they're actually printing hotter than I am. So I'm going to, what's up? So I'm just going to go to 230, just to keep it similar to what they're using. Bed temperature is they preheat at 70, first layer at 60, and then other layers at 50. I'm going to turn this up to 60 on both, which is what I use standard on most of my printers. Volumetric speed is 60. We definitely need to change that over here. So we have that. Now let's go to cooling. Now, cooling might be where it's a little interesting simply because. The FL Sun is very, very, I think, overpowered on the fan almost. So let's just change these settings. So now I'm just going to finish the cooling settings and I'll be right back. Now, since I've changed a couple of settings, let's go ahead and rename this or save it. So I'm just going to change this to FL Sun T1 Pro PLA Plus. And that way, if I accidentally close things out, I'm good to go. I'm going to go to settings overrides now. Let's just take quick look here and there's no override sets we're okay i'm going to click advanced advanced over here nothing notes nothing i can leave dependencies and multi-material i don't need to do anything now i've saved all that so let's close this and now i'm just going to work on the base profile for speed and printing so we have I do have advanced checked on both sides. I'm gonna change the first layer height, three, and I'm just gonna go through all these settings here under quality and just make sure that we're using the same settings across both slicer implementations. So let me just start with quality. I'll go through it and I'll also point out if there's any changes we need to make after I come back. So I've completed the transfer of settings. And then I'm just going to go over to strength and again, follow through with all those. Now in between here, let me save this and I'm just going to call this one instead of standard. I'm just going to call it base because I want this, this set of settings 
I just want them as is. That way I can come back and do the optimization that I want. But I just want, need something that's that initial base. So let's just save that. And then just going to go through strength here and make those changes. And I'll probably go step by step with everybody for the, for the actual speed, because I, I suspect that's where we're going to see the most changes. So I've completed the, the strength settings. I'm just going to save. And let's go over to speed and really see how these printers differ. Now what's interesting is this already, well, let's just do 60, 105, 300. So this is actually, FL Sun has things a lot slower, I think, than Orca Slicer does by default, which again, sort of interesting, but again, not all that surprising because I'm willing to bet that it has something to do with coming out with going slower to get those perfect prints. But you could probably, if you optimize this, do things much better. There's probably a lot of room here, if I'm being honest, for optimization and improvement. So, I mean, that feels okay. So let me finish adding these settings and then I'll come back. And the way I'm gonna test this is just slice the same file across both slicers and just make sure the times look about the same. So I've moved over all the speed settings. I'm gonna save. And then let's just take a look at the support settings. They all should be pretty much the same, or at least I'm willing to bet. And a shoulder angle. So yeah, let me just do this and I'll be right back. So I have the support settings complete. I just want to make sure I turn off enable support. So I don't need that on my test print. Just going to hit OK. I'll take a quick look at multi-material. Actually, I don't have to. There's no equivalent. So let's go to other. And I'll just finish these settings and then we'll run some tests. So I've completed doing the other settings. I just need to hit save. Now to sort of test things, let's take a look at both slicers. So I'm going to hit slice plate on a Felsun slicer. And right now it's showing 18 minutes, 13 seconds on that benchy. Go over to work a slicer, hit slice plate, and that's showing 17 minutes, 47 seconds. And I can tell you part of the difference is under strength. I used a different infill pattern. And a lot of that was due to the fact that there's a waveform let me show you, if I go under strength here, there's a waveform a pattern or waveform grid that is not in Orca Slicer. So I'm not actually seeing that over here in Orca Slicer, which is fine. But right now I'm getting a speed just about equivalent or better than FL Sun Slicer. So that's the process for moving settings between one slicer and another. Now I probably also need to do this with Creality Print for my K2 Plus, and I'm sure in the future there'll be other printers where the manufacturer will have a slicer out there, and everybody seems to be basing off Bamboo Labs and Orca Slicer, which is a good thing. And then they wind up skinning it and adding their own profiles, and then Orca Slicer's a little bit behind and doesn't have those in there. So right now I feel pretty good. I think I'm seeing a good print settings. But the one thing we'll do, I guess, before I sign out, I should have actually thought of this. Let me go ahead and send this to the printer and then we'll take a look at this Banshee compared to the pre-sliced Banshee. So I've completed the print. The print on the right is the pre-sliced model, which is, again, Pretty good looking Benchy. I mean, there's some small issues with it. Um, now the retraction is actually really good on this model. Now here is the model with the new settings, with my new defaults before optimization. And I'm noticing there is a lot of stringing here, so I, I have to do some work on that. But otherwise, I think the quality is almost matching that of the pre-sliced model. Now, what I might be able to do is go through the settings on the pre-sliced model and see if I can see the retraction and whatnot in the G-code and therefore basically steal those settings and move them over here. Now, I may do another short video on looking at settings in the G-code file. I'm not really sure, 
But in my next video, I'm definitely going to work on optimization and tuning with Orca Slicer. So if you have any questions or comments, please post them below. I appreciate your time. I hope you have a great day. Thanks. Talk to you soon.